Good morning, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be reviewing density and land use patterns. Throughout this video, we're going to be looking at how the density gradient of a city changes as you move farther away from the CBD. Now I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record here, but again, we have to make sure we understand the bid rent theory because it impacts the density gradient of every city. Remember, when looking at the bid rent theory, we can see that the closer we get to the CBD, the more expensive land gets and the farther the farther away from the CBD we are, the cheaper land is. All of this has to do with the availability of the land and the amount of demand for the land. The closer we get to the CBD, the more people there are and the less land is available, resulting in higher prices. Densely populated cities often have skyscrapers and buildings that build upwards instead of outwards. Buildings are often clustered together with space being optimized for efficiency, resulting in taller buildings with a smaller lot size and more mixed use buildings. Oftentimes you'll find multi-story buildings that have apartments on the upper levels and retail stores or offices on the street level with a parking lot found underground. Retail stores are often on the ground level in order to make it convenient for shoppers to come in and out of the store, while apartments are located on the higher levels so that residents can enjoy a view of the city and escape the sounds of the busy streets below. People who live in high density areas often rely more on public transportation, are closer to different goods and services, and are more likely to have a larger variety of goods and services at their disposal. High density areas that invest in public transportation and urban planning can create a unique cultural landscape and vibrant communities that can offer more social and economic opportunities for the residents of the city. But on the other hand, cities that have poor urban planning and lack quality public transportation and infrastructure often see food deserts and a lack of economic and social opportunity for residents. Moving outward from high high density areas and into medium density areas, we can see that buildings start to shrink. High rise apartments start to shift to low rise apartments. More multifamily and single family homes start to appear and people start to have room for a small front yard and backyard. Now medium density areas are still often close to high density areas, so they still have limited space. However, oftentimes they start to have more of a suburban feel instead of just an urban one. Restaurants and stores are now spaced out from residential homes, but still remain in close proximity to residential areas. Speaking of residential areas, we can see that they often have more diversity in the types of homes. It is common to see townhomes, duplexes, triplexes, and single family homes all in one neighborhood. Now, as we continue to move farther away from the CBD, we will eventually get to low density areas, which have the most space available. Here, homes are often single family homes or a few low rise apartment buildings. The average lot size is much larger compared to the lot size in a high density area, allowing for more buildings to build outwards horizontally instead of having to build upward. There's also more green spaces in low density areas, room for parking lots and larger roadways, all of which allows residents to not only get around to the local area, but also allows them to get in and out of the larger urban area. Generally, low density areas require more land for the same number of residents as high density areas, which leads to increased commute times and a larger dependence on personal vehicles to get around. These areas often lack public transportation, as it's uncommon for those services that exist in high density areas to extend this far away from the CBD, putting a larger reliance on automobiles for travel. Now, of course, all this depends on where in the world you are looking at. For example, while large skyscrapers are more common in large urban areas in the United States, the same is not true for all European cities. Oftentimes we see cities that put height restrictions on buildings to create a specific city landscape. We can also see that many European cities often tend to have more public transportation and public spaces designed for community interaction in their urban areas, which changes where people live. Now, thanks to advancements in transportation, new interstate systems, and advancements in technology, people can live farther away from the CBD and still have access to the different goods and services that they need. This is changing how land is being used and is impacting high, medium, and low density areas. In countries like the United States, more people are moving away from the CBD and are relocating to edge cities and the suburban areas, which is leading to different businesses to follow suit. The days of having a large retail store downtown with a high threshold are starting to fade away as businesses opt for stores with a larger lot size in a lower density area. All of this is because
because businesses are following their workers and customers as they move to cheaper land that is farther away from the central business district. As urban areas and transportation systems continue to expand, businesses and services will expand with them, resulting in urban sprawl to occur, which will not only change the density of different urban areas, but the spatial layout and land use patterns of cities as well. All right, geographers, the time has come to practice what we have learned. Answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, you can check your answers in the description of the video or in the comment section down below. As always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet for more help with anything AP Human Geography related. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.